Okay, welcome everyone to the second annual Omar Aliyah, a seven week spiritual boot camp of personal elevation, or simply known as TOA. This is the first class of our seven class empowerment series. My name is Nuriel Shore, and in partnership with Hashem, I'm the founder of the Omar Aliyah. <laughs> welcome to participants from the United States, from Canada, Israel, England, Australia, and Uganda who joined us on this journey of holy transformation and spiritual evolution. The vision is for all Jews of all backgrounds across the world to be part of a global movement of revealing our individual and collective greatness through Spirat HaOmer, the counting of the Omer. I wanna take a moment to thank our very generous sponsors. You know, this initiative, this grassroots movement is totally free of charge for any participant that wants to join. Um, there's uh, incredible flexibility with how immersed or how not immersed one wants to be. And uh, it's thanks to the generosity of these sponsors to help unwrite those costs and to make this a sustainable initiative long-term. I also wanna take a moment to thank our community partners uh, for helping to share the magic and spread the word of this Spirata Omer initiative. Um, again, the vision for this is to really be global. And so, uh, and it's, as I mentioned before, it's for every Jew of every background. And you'll notice that some of the synagogues here are Orthodox. One of them is conservative. And um, uh, this initiative, again, is for every single Jew across the planet. So I encourage anybody who's watching this recording that if you belong to a synagogue or another Jewish organization, um, whatever the background is, please consider them for being an official partner for the Omer Aliyah, uh, because the Torah is something that, that is an inheritance for us all. And um, let's get the word out um, as, as, as uh, far and wide as possible. And if anybody would like more information on sponsorship or community partnership, they can email me at omeraliyah at gmail.com. I also want to take a moment to thank my wife, uh, my wife Neely, for providing me with probably hundreds of hours at this point of thinking about all the different ways to develop this initiative. Um, this is not, believe it or not, this is not my full-time job. This is a total, total labor of love um, that takes tremendous time. And uh, without her blessing and our shalom bayit, none of it would be possible. So I want to take this opportunity to give her the proper kavod. So the mission of the Omer Aliyah is to serve as a spiritual detox of the klipot, the barriers that are preventing us from accessing Hashem and our highest selves while simultaneously building a foundation of spiritual power. Practically speaking, the essence of the Omer Aliyah is tikkun amidot, repairing, refining, and elevating our character attributes based on the lower seven spirot, which correspond to these seven weeks. By emulating these divine attributes, we transform into conduits of peace, love, and blessing for ourselves, for others, and for all of creation. The structure of the boot camp consists of four in-person community gatherings in Los Angeles, seven virtual empowerment classes taught by seven teachers, and 49 days of individual learning and growth. For more information on the Omar Aliyah or to start your own local TOA community wherever you are in the world, email me at omaraliyah at gmail.com. We are currently in the week of Chesed, and we have the zuchut of having Batsheva Frankel, a veteran Jewish educator. She is the author of the Jewish Educator's Companion and podcast producer and host of Overthrowing Education, and I'm very proud to call her a dear friend. This class is dedicated in the memories of Sharon Schenker, Seth Glass, and Lucy, Maya, and Rena D. May their neshamot have an aliyah. Before we begin, a few housekeeping remarks. This class is being recorded and will be uploaded to the Omer Aliyah YouTube channel. So please hold all your questions and comments until after the class finishes. I will then stop the recording, after which we will have an opportunity for open and confidential conversation with Batsheva. May Hashem bless the Omer Aliyah and all who are involved so that Klai Yisrael may discover the greatness within and bring about individual, collective, and global gula speedily in our days. I now hand the class over to you, Batsheva. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to do my share screen thing, um, if I can. Go. 
Okay, so this is, uh, of course, Chesed. And it's, to me, this is so special because I was actually born on Chesed Shelba Chesed, the very first day of the Omer. That was my, that's my Hebrew birthday. So I, I wanted, I really wanted to do this and Nuriel knew that I really wanted to do this. So um, I'm really appreciative. And so Chesed is loving kindness. That's right. That's the general understanding of what Chesed is. And I love that it comes first because I feel like in the Omer, because it's the foundation of everything else. And um, I want to, uh, Nuriel mentioned it, but um, I would really love our learning tonight. Uh, I really want to think about uh, Seth Glass. He was the really the master of chesed and um, I'm very emotional today. It was at his, um, at his funeral. And um, so I just want us to all think about um, Shmar Yahu, Melech ben Moshe Tova, and that his neshama should have an aliyah. And, and of course, uh, the other people as well that Noriel mentioned. Um, I put this together before Seth passed away and I just see him in every single piece of this. He really was a master of chesed. Okay, so I want to give a uh, hakarata tov um, because I put together a lot of different ideas and a lot of great sources, including our own Benji Elson's Dance of the Omer, which is, if you haven't gotten it yet, you absolutely need to because it is the most incredible book. Um, I also, Simone Jacobson, who I think is also speaking, he's incredible. And I've also taken from Svi Freeman, who has the Omer app, which I love. It's the thing that's kept me being able to count the Omer all the way through for like three or four years in a row. And I'm so happy. So um, that's the first thing. So I first kind of want to look at the difference between kindness and loving kindness, but I'm going to start out with a story. So um, in uh, 1990, when I was six and 20, um, I got a job. I had moved out to Los Angeles and I was waiting to get my film job. And I started working as a waitress at Sally's Deli in the Valley. Now, when I started waitressing there, um, I was about two weeks in, still the newbie. And these two couples, these elderly couples came in and they sat down in a booth and the waitress who had that station came you know, to the back part of it where we all kind of gathered and said, I'm not waiting on them. No way, I am not waiting on them this time. And then the other waiter who had been there for quite a while said, I'm not waiting on them, forget it. She can do it, she's the newbie. And I was like, well, what's wrong with them? And they both said, oh my gosh, they're so obnoxious and they're so rude. And then they don't even tip. It's awful. So I was like, okay, well, I'll go wait on them. So as I'm walking over, I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to kill them with kindness. I'm just going to plaster a big old smile on my face. And I'm just going to really uh, just you know, be so kind and just so sweet. So I'm walking over there and I'm ready to, in my fakiest kind voice, say, hi, can I help you? What would you like? And all of that. And so what happened was um, I saw them with their arms uh, were on the table and they had numbers tattooed on the inside of their arms. And suddenly, I got it. I said, I cannot imagine in my worst nightmares what these people must have been through. And if they are bitter or challenged or in any way, like I have to have all the empathy in the world for them. And all of a sudden, all my fakey kindness fell away. And I was purposefully so kind to them because my heart just went out and I I did my best to make them happy and they were so nice in return to me. And guess what? They gave me a great tip. So 
that's a story about kindness and loving kindness, which we'll get into a little bit more. But the bottom line is that um, is that kindness, that chesed specifically, is intentional. And that's what we're gonna we're gonna really look at. So kindness, just regular kindness, of course it's awesome, but it can also it also it doesn't need to have intention. You can be kind without actually really intending to be kind. You can be kind just like you know whatever. Um, it can also be inadvertent or accidental, like you weren't going out of your way to be kind, but something that you did ended up to be a kindness. And that's happened. Sometimes even people think that they are doing something that is going to be hurtful to us. And actually, it can be the biggest kindness that there is. Um, so the other thing is it can be disguised. Sometimes, like my killing them with kindness, it's not real kindness. It's disguised kindness. And also, sometimes we're kind out of guilt or obligation, sometimes, especially where our families are concerned and you know, in, in, in our communities are concerned. Um, and lastly, of course, it can be faked completely, like I mentioned before. So said is the energy of generosity. Everything flows with generosity and non-judgmental acceptance. said is compassion and it's unconditional love and it's benevolence. And the ultimate expression of chesed is forgiveness. So and it's uh, really one of the most important things that we can do. And chesed brings the energy of the ultimate expression is forgiveness. And according to the Talmud, chesed is even better than charity. The sages taught that acts of kindness are superior to charity in three respects. So it can be performed only, charity can only be performed with one's money, but an act of kindness can be performed with your whole person, with your time, with your energy, and with your money. Uh, charity is given to the poor, but acts of kindness, of chesed, are performed both for the poor and the rich and everybody in between. And also charity is given to the living, but acts of chesed, acts of loving kindness are performed both for the living and for the dead. And that is an act of kindness that cannot be reciprocated. And so it has a, a special holiness. Um, and if you are already reading Dance of the Omer, then you know this idea that chesed is a river. And it's really beautiful when you think about what a river is, it's flowing, it's always flowing and it fills up the space. And it's, you know, it, it, you can see even in this, in this picture, there's obstacles happening and the, um, and, it, and, and Chesed can take away the obstacles. It can go over the obstacles. Um, Chesed shel b'chesed, I'm going to go through each of the days of chesed. Chesed shel b'chesed is pure love. It's pure loving kindness. It is giving and also being able to receive. And it is reaching beyond ourselves, going beyond everything to put ourselves out there for other people. This I love from Dance of the Omer, become a river, not a dam. And the idea that you just keep it flowing. Chesed is the tool by which we learn to experience the highest reality, which is God. It's through chesed. Okay, but when can chesed actually be destructive? Because, you know, there's a, a, a really great side to it. But if we're not careful, we can see that there's spaces that the river can, if there's no boundaries, the, in our chesed, it just overfills. And you can see all the places it might fill in until this is actually the same location, until you can see it's completely flooded. And that is so dangerous and can lead to total destruction. This also is, this is all the Amazon and you can see what happens 
when when chesed is so overflowing and there's no boundaries and it's just moving like that. Um, so we have to have gavura, right? Gavura is like I call it healthy chesed because it shows you can see the the very demarcated high banks that really um, uh, can hold in that chesed and 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 guide it in a really healthy healthy way, and so. Gavura Shabbat Chesed is really about setting boundaries and also respecting others' boundaries. Those are all crucial things. It also gives us the ability to assess other people's capacity to receive our Chesed, right? If we are just flowing and flowing and flowing with Chesed and, and maybe somebody can't receive it and it's just overwhelming and flooding us, flooding them, right? So we have to be able to, go, to, to rein it in a bit so that we know what they can receive, what they are able to receive, and to make sure to give them what they need versus what we want them to have, right? We get so into our chesed and, and we think we know exactly what people need, but sometimes we need to find out what they need. Um, to ferret of chesed is the balance and the harmony. When you have to ferret of chesed, it is empathy, and compassion. Those are crucial elements of chesed, of loving kindness, is to be able to balance everything with empathy and compassion for other people. And by the way, for ourselves. Um, to ferret is giving also to those who might've hurt you. It's really a challenge, but that's where the empathy and compassion has to come in. And the, and the balance and the harmony. Netzach shel bechesed, which was uh, today, um, not now it's a, a new day, but earlier today it was um, Netzach shel bechesed. It is the constant flow. It is the energy of chesed constantly moving forward. It is the endurance and perseverance of, of being able to give over that kindness and that chesed. Sometimes it is really challenging. It can be really, really hard. So giving chesed, even when it's hard, and even when we don't feel like it, and even when we ourselves are challenged. And um, Netzach Shabbat Chesed was uh, today with um, Seth Glass's funeral, and this was him. This was absolutely 100% him. Uh, Hod Shabbat Chesed is adding humility and gratitude and awe. If you were with me last year, you know I had hoed and I love it. It's so beautiful. And the humility and the gratitude and the awe can lead to amazing things. So imagine we're the river, right? And we are here and the rest of the whole beautiful world is, and everybody in it is all around us. And we can see that we are important, but we are not everything. and that. Um, so, so being grateful and being in awe and adding humility to our loving kindness, not being, uh, gaivedic or haughty about our chesed, right? It's coming from a place of being in awe of the world, of being in awe of Hashem and being in awe of everybody. And that's where some of the most beautiful chesed can flow from. Um, it involves compromise and because, right, humility, if we are humble, we are able to compromise and that is a kindness. And again, forgiveness. We, it's very hard to forgive when we are not humble and we are not in awe and we are not grateful. Then we have Yisod Shel Bechesed. This is the connection and the bonding. This is us. That's you all, or that's me, and other people are here. And then you can see we kind of meet together, right? The two streams come together, and then that, that makes us stronger. When we can unite our chesed and bond it and connect with other people and, and uh, kind of like what Noriel does, which is help people develop their midot. It's such a chesed to, to be doing this, to be arranging this. And um, so it's really important. And then I just wanted to point out that that's where I want to live. 
someday. <laughs> Actually, that's really where I want to live, if we're being honest. Um, Malchut Shel Bechesed is nobility and creating our kingdom. We are all very special. We have to know what our place is and our contribution in this world. And it's really important. Hashem gave each of us something very special. And it is a kindness to the world when we share that thing and are not selfish with that thing, that we share that with the world, to share our kindness, to share our love, to share all of that with the world is what will bring nobility and, and create our own personal kingdoms. Okay, so I just want to check on my time. Okay, good. Um, it, this is about activating chesed. So it's really important. It's great, all these beautiful, beautiful ideas. Um, but we need to know on a practical level, what are some ways to activate chesed? Now we know Biker Cholim, visiting the sick. And you know we know there's so many mitzvot that deal with um, chesed that are part of chesed, right? There's haknas um, orchim, how we take care of our guests. There, of course, it's sadaka, and 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 there's so much that's in there. But I'm like break it down into like a little bit smaller pieces. So I'm gonna just give some ideas, and if any of them catch your fancy, I try them. Okay. So the first thing, I, oh, the first thing I have to do is tell this joke that an eighth grader told me. My I think it was my first year of teaching, and I just told this to my husband. He thought it was really funny. So we'll see. We'll see if you think it's funny. Um, he said. What did the robber say when he held up a rabbi and his students? I'm just going to see, does anybody know and put their, um, put their answer in the chat box and see if you know. What did the robber say when he held up a rabbi and his students? Does anybody know? Nobody? Okay. All right. He said, give me loot, Hasidim. A really bad joke. <laughs> so okay, um, give me luchasadim are acts of loving kindness, but it's also give me loot. Okay, you get it. All right, so telling bad jokes. I don't know if that's a chesed or not. That's up to you to decide. Um, so the first idea is I call it a pocket full of kindness. Just carrying around either like um, a a. a post it little pad that you can just jot off notes to people and like hand them to them, your friends, your family, just people that you want to say something nice to them. You can have pre-made ones kind of ready. You can imagine that you can find these on, you know, the internet, of course, that people make these in advance, but they're really beautiful. And these are really nice messages. And if you have like a little deck and of these and either that you make or that you find like these, that you can just give to people. Um, it could be people you don't know. It could be people you sort of know. It could be all your friends and your family, whoever it is, very intentionally being kind. And then this idea is the same thing. It's just um, clothes clips and you can clip them onto something that somebody, you know, so they'll sort of see it. And um, the other thing is kindness rocks. Now, of course, that's like a plan word because kindness rocks, but it's also kindness rocks. So I don't know if you all know this, but um, this is the idea of decorating these rocks with either beautiful pictures or sweet things or great sayings, and then placing them through like the grass or um, all around so that people just find them. And you know that whenever someone sees it, it's going to make them happy. Like, how do you not be happy when you see these cute smiley faces or a heart on a rock around, you know, other rocks that may or may not also look like that. So they're really fun to hide and just know that you are intentionally trying to make people's day. And um, so there's like a lot of different kinds. The other thing is um, you can have a kindness rocks party or gathering where you and your friends or whoever are decorating rocks together and they don't have to be fancy. They can be, you know, like this, or they can be, you know, somewhat fancier. Um, and then you can distribute them together and you can take different parts like in a park or on a pathway or wherever it is to just 
make people's day. I know that uh, the first time I saw one, it was actually in England and uh, in, uh, outside of London. And I, it just made my day. It was so beautiful. Like you could be in a really bad mood, but if you see, you know, this too shall pass on a rock and you're like, oh my gosh, that is exactly what I needed to see. So, um, so that's a, a fun idea. The other thing is just so simple. Just every day, text a friend or a family member, something kind or something like something loving, something wonderful, just, you know, even I'm thinking of you or here's, I, I heard this cute joke and I, I thought of you and I want to share it. And you just like make people's day. Now there is, there was like this movement to do this to strangers. I think that's super creepy. I do not recommend that, but your friends and your family members will really appreciate it. Especially it's so important to reach out to people that you haven't spoken with for a long time, whether it's a friend who lives far away or a, or a relative that you've just kind of lost touch with. Taking the time this, to, to spread this loving kindness, it's, it is a chesed and it will make someone so happy and it'll, it'll be that connection and bonding piece. This is so important. You have to see the peace of God in every person. So, I remember one of my first Shabbat tables, my friend, well, he's my friend now, but at the time I didn't really know him that well, Robbie Halpern, he said, if you see God in each person, when you look into their eyes, how can you break their heart? And I've always been really moved by that. And seeing that all of us are a piece of the master, right? We're all a piece of Hashem, we're a piece of the master, which of course makes us a masterpiece. If we treat every single person intentionally, not fakey, not just because it's a habit, but like really looking to people's eyes and talking to them, whether they are the bank teller or the grocery packer or the mail carrier or, you know, your teacher or your, you know, I don't know, people just walking down the street just to be kind is really, really important. Um, I don't believe in random acts of kindness. I know that's a thing, like random acts of kindness. We should be doing random acts of kindness. I don't agree with that. I think we need to do intentional acts of kindness. That's what chesed is. It is intentionally doing good things for people and also loving kindness to ourselves. And all of that is really important. It's not random. So my goal for myself and for you all is to really be intentional in your kindness and, and in your love. And, um, and I bless you that this year should be your, your chesed river should just flow and flow with beautiful boundaries and connection and awe and gratitude and, and everything else. So. I think that is it for my share. <laughs> um, Thank you, Bachava. Yeah, I know wow. we're, I, I, that was um, fast because I talked fast, but um, hopefully it wasn't too fast. No, um, it was great. It was great, um, especially the breakdown of every day of the week of Chesed and kind of the various permutations of what that means. Um, it was really, really wonderful. Uh, so again, for those who are watching the recording of this, um, we will see you B'Zarat Hashem in a week for the class of Gvura. And until then, um, we'll be in touch through WhatsApp, through email. And uh, thank you. Thank you for watching this class. So I'm going to start the recording now.